The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. The Catholic TV Network welcomes and invites you to celebrate the sacred mysteries, listen to God's Word, and in the Holy Eucharist, proclaim the victory of Jesus over death until He comes in glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. And with your spirit. Welcome to everyone on this wonderful Veterans Day when we lift our voices and our hearts in prayer and gratitude for all those who have served and are serving in our military with us uh, to be able to celebrate this great Mass as have members of the MIT ROTC unit, as well as graduate students at MIT who currently serve us in the military. My name is Father Michael Medes, and I have the privilege of being the Catholic chaplain at MIT, and also a chaplain in the United States Air Force. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, in a moment of humility before God and one another, let us call to mind our sins, knowing truly that God is mercy and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to reconcile the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you pray for us now at the right hand of your Father and ours. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all of our sin and bring us together one day unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are glorified in the bishop, St. Martin, both by his life and death, make new, we pray, the wonders of your grace in our hearts, that neither death nor life may separate us from your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, greet Prisca and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I am grateful, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church at their house. Greet my beloved Eponidas, who is the first fruits in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives and my fellow prisoners. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachus. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. I, Tertius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Cordus greets you. Now to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery 
kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples i tell you make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth so that when it fails you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings the person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in greater ones and the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The Pharisees who loved money heard all these things and sneered at him, and he said to them, You justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. And for what is of human esteem is an abomination in the sight of God. Rejoice, for this is good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, sometimes in our life we might think that there's a lot of coincidences, and coincidences are certainly a part of life, but there are also times when God can either intend something to happen, a situation, an experience for us in our life, but God can certainly use anything that happens in our life to reach out to us. And I really believe that today, on this Veterans Day, God is using the sacred scriptures for us 
and this civic holiday, both of them coming together, and not only the sacred scriptures and a civic holiday, but the saint day that we celebrate today, Martin of Tours, himself a soldier serving so honorably, 18 years old, converted to the Catholic faith, so much was his heart opened in great love of others. This, as you probably know, is what St. Augustine called a vocation of charity in military service. He said that anyone who would step forward and put on the uniform was fulfilling a vocation of love because that person is willing to sacrifice their life for another. St. Martin stepped forward as a soldier and he converted to our Catholic faith because love was already born in his heart and that, that love was seeking the greatest of all loves, the greatest of all contentment, the greatest of all purpose and meaning, God himself. So all of these things, we might think that would be enough for our celebration today, to be inspired and uplifted about how God is present in our Veterans Day Mass. But let me remind you of the very beginning of the reading, the first reading that we had about Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life. That's not a coincidence that that's our reading today, because God is trying to reassure all of us that there isn't a moment in our life, there isn't a situation that God is not aware of, present to, loving us within. We can think of the great vocation then to military service and today we have such an inspiring congregation with the young people from MIT as I mentioned those graduate students who are there at MIT and also our ROTC members young men and women who are willing to step forward to say I want to serve God I want to serve country God is using that reading today to remind us that in the lives of everyone who wears the uniform, God's strength, his trust, and his assurance is present. But it's not only then confined to those of us who wear the uniform. Today, we also remember that within our own homes, within the place we might find today as work, God needs his true presence to be known to those that we come in contact with. Who today might need our strength, our reassuring strength, that God will keep them safe through us, through our kindness and concern. Who today might need our very witness? Maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's a friend. If you're in a healthcare setting, it could be somebody that you're sharing a room with, could be somebody down the hall, could be one of the healthcare workers who needs to know that God is working through them and that God is present with you. Today is a day we celebrate the men and women who have put on the uniform and those still serving. But may their great witness of this vocation of love, of charity, spur all of us on to know that at the heart of all love is God, with us and through each and every single one of us, wherever we may be and in whatever situation we might find ourselves within. We now open our hearts and voices as we offer to the Lord some of our need. For the faithful departed, especially those whose names have been placed near the altar, may they rest in God's peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For veterans, that they may know the appreciation of a grateful nation and the blessings of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For military members and their families who are currently serving, that they may be kept in safety and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of the military who made the ultimate sacrifice and for peace in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to listen to the prayers which we have voiced, but as always to the quiet ones of our hearts and if they be for your greater honor, our greater good, that you grant them all through Christ our Lord.
Would you pray with me that this, our sacrifice, yours and mine, might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Sanctify these offerings, we pray, Lord God, which we joyfully present in honor of St. Martin so that through them our life may always be directed, whether in tribulation or in prosperity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on this festival of St. Martin, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our bishop, 
and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant to us who have been restored by this sacrament of unity, O Lord, perfect harmony with your will in all things, that just as St. Martin submitted himself entirely to you, so we too may glory in being truly yours, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go now to live it in peace and in joy. Thanks be to God. We have worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, the Catholic TV network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire, or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.